DLC is often seen as a bit of a dirty word in gaming these days, with day one DLC and pre-order bonuses and excessive add-ons a key talking point for the negative side of the practice. There are a lot of games that do DLC correctly and support the notion of adding content and life to an already established game. However, recently there were three games in particular that I felt let the side down, all for different reasons, and left me feeling disappointed after finishing their DLC. First off, Remnant from the Ashes. This was in my list of top 10 games from 2019. It was an interesting take on the Souls-like genre, adding co-op gameplay, focusing on guns over melee combat, and it had a bunch of replayability. The developers have added more content as time has gone on, such as hardcore mode for the campaign, and a couple of months ago released their first paid DLC. What did this add to the game? Well, not much. It added one new area for the adventure mode, with an additional boss to defeat for an achievement. This boss was actually fairly challenging, and I put it in my top three hardest bosses of the game overall, but that was the only high point. The new area that they added was simply a section of the main campaign transferred to the adventure mode, a game mode where you can replay certain sections of the main story. One could argue that this should already be part of the game, and it really isn't new at all. They also added a survival mode, which is pretty interesting, and it's essentially a roguelite boss rush mode for the game. Like I said, interesting, but is it worth the price point of $9? It all runs in the same areas, same bosses, and the only new content added was an alternative currency for armor skins. Yes, when you consider that a hardcore mode of the campaign was added into the developers for free, charging for something very similar seems a bit of an odd decision. Many people in the community agreed, stating that this DLC really didn't add much to the game. Pokemon Sword and Shield has been a hive of controversy for a while now, even before its release, due to the reveal that the game wouldn't be a host to the entire decks of the series. Fans have argued back and forth over Game Freak's apparent decline in motivation to improve the series, and while the game itself isn't bad by any means, it definitely isn't anywhere near the best of the franchise. Fast forward to 2020 and the release of a double header of DLC. First off, the Isle of Armor, which came out recently. It added a whole new region to the game, a storyline to play through, new Pokemon, and even some new mechanics. Sounds pretty good, right? A big issue with the DLC was the new Pokemon that were added into the game weren't exactly new. The Isle of Armor Dex has 200 Pokemon to catch, but just over 100 of these were already in the main game, and the rest, bar two, were old mons that had been excluded from the main game previously. The storyline itself was pretty short and didn't pose much of a challenge to those who had already beaten the main game. The longest section was actually having to grind the new Pokemon you receive from level 1 to 70, but if you'd done raids and had XP candies, that time filler was completely removed. In its defense, there were some great quality of life mechanics added, the ability to add Gigantamax to any Pokemon capable of it using the max mushrooms, but at $30, is it really worth adding something like that behind a paywall? With the Crown Tundra DLC coming out later in the year, people have defended the price point due to the two-for-one deal, but shouldn't all of the DLC in a purchase pack be worthy of it? Moving on, the Borderlands series has always been a high point for me when it comes to DLC. Borderlands 2 had a number of additions to the game which added lengthy sections, more raid bosses, a host of additions such as new characters and weapons. Borderlands 3, however, has been a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to its downloadable content. Much like Pokemon, Borderlands 3 had a rough start to its life. It was originally released on the Epic Game Store toward the end of 2019, before being released over six months later on the Steam Store in 2020. By that time, two DLCs had been dropped already. I picked up the game in March when it initially released on Steam, playing through it for the first time, and it had a half price sale, so I picked up the Deluxe Edition, which included the Season Pass, and access to all current and future DLC. The first DLC had a long story, plenty of side quests, weapons, and extra content. The second, it had an interesting story, but it offered a lot less on the side of volume. Fast forward to June, and the Bounty of Blood, the third DLC of the season pass, dropped, and there was a lot of disappointment. The story itself was pretty short. There are minimal side quests, and doing all of the missions, plus the collectibles, takes you four to five hours at most. Not bad, you might think, but when you consider each DLC for Borderlands is $15, you'd probably expect a bit more, especially given the quality of the first. 
With the declining experience of each DLC, buying the Season Pass is a risk. Do you buy them individually at a greater cost to yourself, but guarantee you only purchase the content you want, or do you buy the pass and take the good with the bad? A simple answer to all of this is wait for the reviews and only buy the DLC that is considered playable. Or just don't buy any DLC at all. But when games start to require you to buy the DLC to stay relevant, it's kind of hard to avoid. For example, playing Pokemon competitively kind of requires the DLC for the easy access to Mons and the Gigantamaxing addition to your high IV Pokemon. And Borderlands 3 raises the level cap with each DLC by 3, so you get the better loot pool and it's harder to play with your friends if you're being outleveled each time. What do you guys want to see in DLC? How much content do you like to be added for a certain price? Are season passes a good idea or bad for gaming in general? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.